Hey, um, we have a pretty cool broadcast for you today, I think. We've got Helen from Slack who's going to be joining us and teaching us all about how to integrate our Lexbox with chat. I uh, just want to remind everybody that we have an ongoing hackathon, kind of the serverless hackathon, um, serverless chatbot hackathon. And I'm going to link to that now. I'm just going to kind of wait for a few minutes and talk for a bit so we can kind of get some people in the stream. If you guys are in the chat, go, us, uh, go ahead and say hello. Uh, let us know if the audio is right. If uh, Hi, I'm a light. Let us know if the audio is right. Let us know if the uh, screen looks OK. Just double checking everything is good, and then we'll get going. Hello, Lyle Davids. All right, cool. So it seems like everything is working OK. Um, all right, looks good. Okie dokie. Let's get started then. OK, what I want to build today is a chatbot. And I'm sure you guys have worked with chatbots before. You have seen how all of this kind of comes together. Uh, we've covered it before in the past on other streams. Let me switch on over into US East 1. But what we haven't really talked about before are the various integration points. So I want to take today, and we'll start like we do pretty much every other stream by building a Lambda function that will satisfy our chatbot. Uh, and then the goal today is to build a chatbot that lets you guys vote on other episodes of this broadcast. Uh, it should be a really, really simple chatbot to get started. Um, we're basically just going to respond to the Lex event, which is kind of a JSON event type that we get, and we will work forward from there. So let's go ahead and do our standard procedure here of um, opening up a Jupyter Notebook. So I'm going to make a directory. Uh, does, this, does the text need to be larger, do you guys think? MKDIR. Uh, Twit episode voter bot. We'll CD into episode voter bot, and we'll start with the Jupyter notebook here. Uh, and we will be using Python as it's the greatest language in the entire world. That's a joke. All right, I'm gonna start this little Python notebook up here. You'll notice I chose Python three again. Uh, that's because Python 3 is better. And of course, the first thing that we always do is import photo 3. Um, so let me make this a little bit bigger. Oops. Uh, and I'm just going to go over into another screen here. There's some messages that some people have, and I just want to make sure that everything is going well on the stream. So give me one second while I check all this out. Uh, okay, cool. Looks, the quote uh, from the person watching the stream is good enough for government work. Uh, okay, cool. So now, as you know, when we're building our little Lambda functions, the first thing we always do is we kind of get set up with uh, our uh, Lambda handler function. So we're gonna say def Lambda handler event context uh, and we're never going to use context uh, and we'll we'll basically have uh, a kind of state machine and what that state machine is going to do is it's going to check what the incoming intent uh, from Lex is so we're going to have a couple of different intents and the first intent is going to be describe episodes and the second intent is going to be uh, vote on episodes. So before we go any further in this section, I'm just going to say, you know, describe episodes uh, equals equals event current intent name, then do something. Otherwise, if else if or elif. Uh, vote episode equals equals event current intent name 
then do something. Uh, and for right now, that do something is just going to be to print uh, some sort of response, like describe episodes intent called. And this one will be print vote episodes intent called. Um, and then we'll hop on over into the Lex console here. And I'm gonna, I have an episode voter bot where I was trying to do this earlier, but I'm gonna be very brave and delete this. No, I, I'm not actually that brave. We're gonna go ahead and create a new one from scratch and we'll call this episode voter number two. Uh, and we don't really need an output voice, but I guess we could add one for, Hello, for giggles. My name is Joanna. Um, and then we'll have a session timeout of, you know, 30 seconds. Nope, one minute. And there we go. So this is the basic layout of a Lex chatbot. You have your editor screen here. Uh, and there, there are two key components, really, which are the intents and the slots. Uh, the slots are really straightforward. They're typically just the variables that you're trying to ingest. The intents are a little more complex. The intents, you have to provide something called a list of sample utterances. And those sample utterances help build a machine learning model for that intent. So despite the fact that I might say, hey, how do I vote? Uh, and that might not be one of the intents that I create, the intent model should be able to parse it anyway and get me to the intent that I'm intending, hence the name intent. It doesn't have anything to do with camping. I'm sorry, that was really bad. So we're going to create a new intent, and we're going to call this uh, describe episodes 2. And these are some sample utterances hey, what can I vote for? We'll make another one. And we don't have any slots on this one, so it should be really easy. Or what are some other ways that we could ask what our voting options are? What is this? Uh, let's add another one. What are my options? How do I vote? And I think that should be enough to kind of get a model going because it has an existing understanding of various language models. Um, uh, sorry about that. Um, so are we having any audio issues, guys? It sounds good on my end, but some people are reporting to me that we have some audio issues. Anyway, I'm going to keep going. Uh, and for now, we'll just say we'll return those parameters to the client. Uh, so we'll save this intent. We can go. We can build the bot. And this takes a second, especially the initial. Uh, the initial build tends to take significantly longer than the, uh, the subsequent builds. Uh, and I accidentally included punctuation in all of these, so you're not supposed to do that. Let me take those out. Uh, so I'll do that, and I'll save the intent, and then I'll click build again, and uh, then we'll have a brief 30-second conversation. Uh, have any of you guys used Lex yet? Anybody built anything with Lex? Anybody interested in building something with Lex? And a CW program says if you're having issues with the audio, you might want to check on the volume slider for the player because it comes halfway by default. All right, looks like our bot finished building. And uh, let's see, we got a bunch of different people who say they're building different uh, Lex bots. So 
Mike Moskowitz says he's building something. Robin Smith CA says they're building something. Mihai Malin says they're building something. Kenneth Three says, no, I'm not building anything. Okay, let's test this. So what we should get back is the parameters that we enter. So we'll just say, what are my options? Uh, and then I'm gonna say zoom, boom, boom. And it'll give me my kind of confirmation prompt. Uh, and Cream Sauce Wow says, wonder if any of this can be integrated in a Telegram's bot feature. And it absolutely can, actually. I uh, I have a series of blog posts coming out about how you can implement, inc uh, sorry, integrate with Telegram, Line, uh, and a bunch of others. But today, I think what we're going to focus on is integrating with Slack, because uh, we have a super cool guest star, guest star from Slack who's going to show us how we can like easily plug our bots in. Okay. So you guys can see over in this corner, uh, if I make this up here, you can see as I'm typing, what are my options? The uh, response is that it's waiting to be fulfilled. The um, next thing that I put in was just random text and it gives me my kind of confirmation prompt of, sorry, could you please repeat that? Or in this case, it was just like, I don't even want to try. So let me turn off the banner uh, down at the bottom here so that you guys can see a little better. Go away. Um, and uh, Sekunoid says that it's looking more and more like I have to move to Python, but I do want to just convey that everything that we're doing right now could easily be done in Node as well. It's just that Python is a much more fun language than JavaScript. This is how I start religious warfare on the stream, I'm sorry. Okay, so we have our first intent. Uh, the next thing that we have to do is create kind of a slot type. And the slot type is gonna be kind of our vote going to be our variable for our vote and this should be really really easy to do uh, we may not even need our own type so much as we need um, a, a a variable because I think it'll be easier to take um, And Chrysopolis asks, can Amazon Lex do the initial outreach to a user? I'm going to say no, unless you have a Lambda trigger an intent and also send a message as Lex. Uh, so Chrysopolis, you cannot do that initial uh, push to a user. It's the same as the Alexa SDK. You can't really do push notifications, but you can always respond to user input. So one of the things that I recommend if you're trying to do initial push to a user and you control that entry point is to send kind of a JavaScript message that fires off a hidden intent that is just like, hey, start something. Or if you have the same credentials as the bot user, you can send a message as the bot. Uh, and I have a couple examples of that as well. And we just released something on the AWS blog um, about how to kind of integrate Lex chatbots into your website. So that's something to consider as well might be kind of useful. So um, we're going to create a slot type. Um, and, and the interesting thing is that we don't actually need a custom slot type. So, you know, typically it, when I'm taking random input, I would create a slot type called votes, and then I would give it a couple of different values. But since our options are going to all be numbers anyway, what I'll do is just take a uh, the amazon.number as input. So we're going to create a new intent, which is going to be vote episode two. And this is going to have I vote for option. Um, and this is going to be option. And this is going to be a slot type of amazon.number. So we'll save this. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and add another one, which is just going to be option with no other text. Uh, and I also kind of want to change this to be lowercase because I don't like using my shift key. Um, 
Let's see, what are some other sample utterances that we could use to vote? Anybody have any ideas? Uh, how about very mechanical sounding vote? Okay, and then option. So, uh, Robin Smith CA says option for the win. All right, and I think that should do it. So, we can go ahead and save this intent as well, and I'll say uh, build again. Uh, and you'll notice the subsequent builds of the bot tend to complete much faster than the initial builds. I don't actually know why that is. Uh, although it's not the case this time, is it? Anyway, while this is going, we can hop on over back to our Lambda function. Um, and we can go ahead and say that this is going to be vote episodes too. Uh, and I think what we'll need to do is we'll need to store the options that we're planning on voting in a DynamoDB table. So we can kind of have a, an options table over here, which is going to be boto3.client uh, options, or sorry, DynamoDB table. Oh, and this needs to be resource, not client. Resource uh, table options. And then we also kind of need a votes table. So let's see. Uh, we'll say vote table equals voto3 resource dynamodb.table votes table. We'll just call it votes, actually. Um, and then Abhissive, if you're having issues where you don't get any audio, uh, try looking at your player. Everybody else seems to have audio that's good to go. Um, maybe refresh the page. But let's test this intent now that it's built. So I want to say I vote for one, one for the win. Uh, zoom, boom, a foom, one. Oh, that worked. <laughs> One, 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 one. That did not work. Uh, one, one. So there's basically no way for it to not count as a vote. Uh, so let's say, how can I vote? Okay, good. Uh, and Foxy mentions that Lambdas have a five-minute hard timeout, and that is correct. They have 300 seconds of execution, and then you are cut off. There's a really useful function um, that you can use in the context called get time remaining millis, uh, and that will give you how much time you have left in your initial function execution. Okay, cool. So this is our, our entire intent for now. Let's go ahead and hop on over to Lambda and kind of throw this together episode voter um and yeah that should do it so we're basically just going to monitor this and make sure that it gets called after we rebuild the bot here so we'll go and we'll change this to latest and we have a fulfillment function and typically you have a different a fulfillment function for each different uh, intent. But in this case, uh, I think it's easier to just use one function considering the simplicity of what we're building. Uh, let's hop on over. Um, and then we'll switch on over to this as a AWS Lambda function as well. And we'll say episode voter. Yes, we will give Lex permission to invoke the function and we'll save the intent and we will build once again. 
Uh, and then what I'm expecting is we'll get an error, despite how simple the function is. It's just kind of what happens. Um, and we're not really returning anything. So And CW program mentioned something about spot instances. And one of the coolest features of spot instances, in my opinion, is that if you uh, have your termination uh, terminated, or sorry, if you have your execution terminated in less than one hour, we do not charge you for, like, even if you use it for 59 minutes and 55 seconds, we don't charge you for those 59 minutes of compute. So it's, it's uh, advantageous to set your spot bids as aggressively as possible and make your workloads as adjustable as possible. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this bot. We'll say, what is this? Uh, and it got a null response, that's fine. But we wanna make sure that this was called. So we'll hop on over into CloudWatch. And This is weird. And yes, the describe episode's intent was called. Okay, cool. So the uh, the next thing we need to do is kind of make our responses more re resilient. So we're gonna say, we're gonna have this kind of like build response method. Um, response. And I think this should really just take a message and nothing else. And it should just build the default JSON of a Lex response, which I will now type entirely from memory. I'm just kidding. I've, I've done this before. So we have a dialog action and that's gonna be what kind of our response action is. And these can be of type, um, close they can be of type uh fulfilled um or not type close uh of prompt uh there are a couple different kinds but this is going to be of type close we're going to have a fulfillment state i don't know how to spell fulfillment it's a real issue uh and the state is going to be that the intent is fulfilled and we're going to be able to say message uh, it's going to be content type of plain text and content is going to be message. So that should do it for building a response. Uh, so let's change this print really fast to be uh, build response instead. Uh, and we'll do the same here. Uh, vote episodes two called and we'll hop on over back to Lambda whoops we'll save this and then we'll invoke it again and we should say what is this uh, and I don't think it's updated quite yet So we'll take just a second. Let's try this one more time. What is this? A null response from Lambda. Oh, do you know what it is? It's because I'm not calling return in the function because I am an idiot. There we go. Now I can hop back over and say, what is this? And cool, we're getting our response. Everything looks good. Um, and I'm sorry, I just had the chat minimized for a second. So let me, uh, oh yeah, you guys were totally helping me out there. <laughs> um, and Cream Sauce Wow asks how you would make Lex learn from the users. There's an entire, there are two different Lex r APIs. There's the runtime API and there's the model building API. So within, um, so I'm gonna hop on over here back to the uh, notebook. So you can get uh, the Lex runtime client, or you can get the Boto3 client uh, Lex model building. 
And the model building lets you add knowledge to the, uh, and Ranleo says it's late where I am. Is this going to be available to watch later? And yes, it will be on our Twitch channel for a while. And then it'll be on our YouTube channel after that. Um, and the, uh, the model building API allows you to update models and add new information to various slots, like different users and stuff like that, as much as you want. The other advantage of Lex is that it actually has the user stuff built in. So if we go back here to uh, this initialization and validation code hook, I can check what my incoming user is from, ex from an external channel. Um, and SirGuessM says you can keep word dictionaries and DynamoDB table, I assume, and you don't actually have to because the slot model and everything will maintain that for you. Um, uh, and then Mike Moskowitz says that you have to choose the latest as a version number, and it is literally the most annoying UI quirk. Um, it's, it's actually there to protect you, uh, and I know it doesn't seem like that, but it, <laughs> it, it does annoy me like crazy as well. Uh, but it's there to prevent you from accidentally, you know, editing some intent in one place and then missing it and then clicking build uh, and having your bot with all of your different customers, you know, be affected. Uh, because th this is this is going to sound super corporate cool lady, but at Amazon, we're pretty customer obsessed. And the fact that these bots chat to your customers means like that cult customer obsession uh, is kind of like multiplied. And so that's why there are all these different layers of safety. But yeah, for everybody who's building a Lex bot, you're going to go through this moment where you're like trying to edit this stuff and you'll think, oh, it's building. That's why I can't edit it. No, in order to edit it, you have to go over here to the version section and click on latest. Um, and it also took me an hour to figure that out. So hopefully you guys having watched this stream will not suffer the same way that I did. Uh, cool. So let's, uh, let's keep going with our, and cream sauce. Wow says, I'm now very interested with Lex, but could I make it connect to IRC? Anything is possible with Python, uh, cream sauce. Wow. I will be publishing a blog post about how you can connect it with IRC. And in one of the episodes that we did earlier this year, back in, I think February or January, we actually played using Lex. Uh, we built something that did uh, Twitch plays AWS console. So you could control mouse movements in a console and keyboard movements in a console using Lex, using uh, the the Win32 API. Um, and we, we, we can easily hook it into IRC. Uh, and we will do that at some point. And we have done it in the past. In fact, if you go into... Uh, just dot ran or just dot github dot com slash ran man uh the the actual time and the code that we use to hook lex into irc is somewhere in there but today we're going to do something even cooler than irc which is slack uh so we're going to hook everything into slack all right so this is the the basic bot layout um, now I've got to go and create these two tables really fast. So let me do that. DynamoDB. So we'll create our first table here, and this is going to be votes. Uh, and the primary key is going to be user. Or I don't actually know how we're going to record votes in this. Um, let me think, let's think about this for a second. Uh, we could build our votes table with user as the primary key, and we could have, uh, your vote recorded there, and then we could just do a table scan and tally up what the option number of your vote was. That seems to be the easiest way of doing that. And Louis Sartola brings up a really cool idea for something to build, which is, am I copy pasting from Jupyter to the AWS code text area, or is Jupyter automatically updating your AWS Lambda code? Uh, and Jupyter is just my scratch pad. So unfortunately, it can't automatically 
uh, update, but now I'm going to build that when I get off. I, I have a 12 hour plane ride to London tonight, so I think I'll build that. So let's just call this user. Uh, and we don't need a sort key. Uh, and then we'll create another table, which is going to be the options table. Um, votes options. And this will just be, uh, hmm. And Robin Smith CA, yes, I am preventing a user from voting multiple times. So while you can't vote multiple times, you will be able to change your vote as many times as you want. Um, but it will only, each user only gets one vote because this is a, uh, this is a first past the post democracy democratic election and I reserve the right as dictator to completely overrule uh, similar to the current American political system. Uh, so options are going to be um, so Helen from Slack HQ is going to be joining in about 20 minutes here once we get the bot working she's going to help us uh, get it all working and running over in Slack. So we have our options table, but what do you guys think that we should call the, uh, so I think we'll have like a poll ID and then we'll just have an options string list. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, option table, let's say uh, we're going to do put item. Well, I can probably do this in the DynamoDB console, actually. Um, I'll wait for this table to finish creating and do it there. Um, <laughs> items. So we'll do create item, and we'll just give this an ID of, you know, one or episodes is what we'll call it. Uh, and then... We'll create a string set, and the string set is going to be options, and string is going to be um, Twitch plays AWS console, and then we'll do another one. Uh, call Fefe. Might be too old for that joke now. Um, 24 hours of Rick rolling. Um, and then what's another good example episode? How about go away or I will replace you with a very small shell script. No, let's, let's say with a very small Lambda function. Cool. Uh, okay. So, oh, you want I can hash cheeseburger as one of the options? We can do that. Uh, I can has cheeseburger. Okay, cool. So let's go over here and we'll say options table. Uh, get key equals pull episode. Oh, get item would be helpful, I think. And this is the metadata that we get. It didn't have a response. Did I not actually insert? The, oh, it's episode. That's why. So we'll say get pull episodes. Uh, and then we have our item. We have our options and these are going to be our pull options options equals uh, and then if we go here options okay cool so is this coming in as a set that's strange type i would have thought it would have come in as an array but it comes in as a set very weird it's kind of cool um, and CW program says, I just throw a JSON doc into S3 and call it a day. 
But the advantage of all of this is that I could potentially add myself as an admin uh, and I would be able to submit my own episodes and I could create another intent, which would be like add vote or add poll option and we could do all of that. So there's some advantages to using a database over using an S3. Um, not that you couldn't do literally everything with a doc in S3, it's just uh, we're not going to. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll say uh, here options equals this and then we will uh, message equals uh, new line dot join options uh, well I will say that if you come work at Amazon you don't have to pay your AWS bill so it's one advantage and we are hiring it's 95% of the reason that I chose to work here um, cool so we'll join by new lines and I'll probably need to add some numbers or something here uh, I'm trying to think if there's a better way of just doing this all in one fell swoop so for uh, options dot items is there in Python a way to get a uh, a set of indexes along with your items it, there used to be this thing called iter items in Python 2 but I don't rem remember if that's also here we can just test it options options dot iter items it's not a thing anymore is items a thing now no nope. What if I wrap this in iter and then, okay, I have to look it up. Get index and item in Python 3. The, the index thing is not what I want. I want I want an iterator that has the enumerate. Enumerate does it? Okay, cool. Perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. Um, V squared one zero says it's encouraging to see pros using Stack Overflow on a live stream. Um, you should probably be aware by now that I am not a pro. <laughs> if that wasn't immediately clear when we first started, let me make that very clear now. Uh, not a pro. Cool. So whoever suggested enumerate, Louis Sartola, thank you very much for that exactly what we needed so we'll say for i option and enumerate options uh, and we'll say message equals da, da, da. and we'll say message um, plus equals uh, slash in dot format um, Format IJ. Uh, David MCO talks about seven certs. I have to say that the networking exam was extremely, extremely difficult. It is by far the most difficult one that I've taken. Uh, I use pretty much all the time and it was super hard. So networking exam, super hard. Good luck. Uh, cool. So let's go and uh, modify our little lambda function one more time. Lambda.
Uh, and Sergey Sim says uh, regarding keeping words in a database versus only in slot types, can we group multiple forms, synonyms, bots, bots, shoes under the same product key? Uh, you you can you get what's kind of like a slot type, and you can create a custom slot type, and using that custom slot type, you can basically uh, do the work that you're trying to do. Um, so you, you, you couldn't really, uh, you couldn't really, you know, have a hierarchy, which is what I think what you're describing, but you could easily have every, you know, word that you wanted and every stem of that word and every plural of that word, uh, correspond to that slot type. And even you wouldn't have to manually specify, uh, bat and bats or, mice and mouses you know you wouldn't have to do all of that it would figure it out for you okay cool let's keep going let's test this now we can say what are my options uh-oh and we had an unhandled error and it's because once again i have no idea what i'm doing um so we'll return Uh, and let's try this one more time with feeling. What are my options? Uh, and we got another error, which is probably that I can't, I don't have the right IAM policy to call this or something. Uh, and if that's the case, I'll be really annoyed. Um, and I'll probably just give my function admin rights, um, which is something you should never actually do in production. Uh, enumerate is spelled wrong. Of course it is. I thought this would have caught that. Oh, I never even ran it. Enumerate. Um, so we'll go back again. We'll execute it again. What are my options? And we got another error. The good news is we can kind of like keep running into new errors very quickly. Name J is not defined. Ah, geez, guys, I'm just like, let me take a second here, collect myself and actually get this done. Format I option, new line, all that good stuff. See, this really should have caught. Uh, hmm. Let's try once more with feeling. What are my options? Okay, cool. And the new lines aren't rendering very well, but that's fine. We'll figure it out later. Um, the only concern I have is actually uh, that the 24 hours of rickrolling will register as a uh, option number 24. Uh, so now we have to update this little uh, vote section. And this should be really easy. I'm pretty sure we could just do this as, um, well, let's let's get the whole event really fast and let's see what it comes in as print event because we're going to have uh, usernames coming in from Slack as part of this. And basically what I want to do is I want to be able to make a username correspond to a vote. Um, so let's see what the whole event type looks like. Lex event type. There's this whole collection of uh, sample events that is really, really useful. So user ID is what we're looking for here. User ID specified in the post request to Amazon Lex. Uh, Okie dokie. So we'll say, uh, this should be really easy. We should just say votes, vote table dot put item item equals 
user uh, event user ID and vote. It's going to be uh, Uh, Chrysopolis asks, when usernames come in from Slack, does Lex keep track of that as the user ID? Because I'm having trouble with Twilio user ID, which I would have thought would be the phone number. Uh, and I'm not actually sure on the Twilio side. I can look into it, though. You can always shoot me an email. Um, you can go here, randhunt at amazon.com. You can always shoot me an email there, and I can try and kind of like dive deep with you on it. But I, I actually did something with Twilio not too long ago, and I was getting user IDs coming in. Uh, but you're right, it wasn't a phone number. It was some sort of obscure ID that I had to map to a phone number. Uh, but I don't remember how I did that, because this was maybe eight months ago or so, um, back before Lex was generally available. OK, and we're going to have a vote. And our vote is just going to be our uh, Let's see. It's going to be what our whatever our slot type is. So we have to see what the So from event we'll get uh sorry. Where was I coding this even? Vote is going to be event slots uh option and and toga62 says what about a custom slot without default values i want an open slot but it won't allow me to do that it needs some sample but then the test console never works with anything but that word uh toga62 so that is a limitation actually of the underlying framework alexa has the same issue so you'll notice that alexa it only has amazon.literal in the english language and that is marked as deprecated and it's because we're moving towards a, a kind of a different way of writing these things. But if you want to figure out a good way of, it, th there's a hack essentially, Toga62, where you can add like 10,000 items into a slot type and you can do this with the API and then it'll recognize basically everything. And I don't recommend you do that too often because it, if you have a bunch of different intents and you have a bunch of different slots that you're trying to match, it's going to be uh, non-trivial to, to get the right kind of input. Um, and Rich Grow asks what my extension is. It's from this thing called Gyroscope app, and I just got it, and it's really, really cool. Uh, anyway. And then we'll say... Um, voted for and we'll say format event user id and then we'll say uh event slots option okay guys i'm gonna have to pick up the pace here because we've got a guest star who's going to talk all about the slack integration so i'm going to stop being able to take uh so many questions just for the next like five or six minutes and then we're going to try and get helen on the stream and get her talking all about slack all right so build response, event user ID, voted for, slots option, and that got recorded. Um, but this parentheses is in the wrong place. Um, Okie dokie, cool. Everything looks good, no syntax errors. Oops, save. I did save and test, but I don't know why I did save and test, because I'm gonna test it over here. Um, so what are my options? And then I'm going to say zero. And then an error occurred, occurred because, of course, an error occurred. Uh, and I'm sure this is just me not having the right table name or something like that. Um, slots is not a...
Oh, it's because it's inside of the intent. That's my bad. I, uh, I was reading the response format incorrectly. So if we go back here really fast and we just say uh, event current intent slots option current intent Um, and don't code like I code. I should be saving this into like a sub variable and doing everything like that. But in the interest of time, we're just going to leave this simple bot as it is for now. Um, and we'll say zero. And we still got a bad response. Uh, and this is going to be when the, um, when the table name is wrong. That's my guess. Strange. Seems like there was some issue. Oh, am I missing a return again? Every time, every time. Good call, uh, Lubo. Lubu, Lubu, Lubu. Sorry, I don't know how to say that. Lubu. Um, zero. And um, it looks like FLR voted for zero. Great. And if we go into DynamoDB, we should see that is there. Um, so if we go into tables and we go into uh, votes, items, da da da. And actually, just to make this a little bit clear, I'm going to add one last thing to our Lambda function. Um, and then I'm going to turn it over to Helen. Episode voter. Uh, I also want to add into the thing that I'm putting here a poll ID, um, just in case we use this for other polls in the future. Um, so I'm just going to call this uh, poll. So I'm going to create this thing item equals um, user event. Ah, come on. Event user ID. Uh, we'll say vote is going to be event current intent slots option uh, I'm going to say poll is going to be um, episodes and we'll just hard code that in for now and we'll say put item item uh, and we'll test this one more time zero one, three, uh, and we don't have any validation or anything, so you would be able to like do pretty much anything. Uh, and Mike Moskowitz recommends it would be so helpful if developers could create their own smart slot types, whether it be ones that use heavy parsing like Amazon.time or DB lookups like Amazon.movie. I'd like to create World Health Organization dot disease or similar. Uh, and I think that's a really great idea. And uh, I will happily give that feedback to the team. And I think some of the people from the team are actually on the stream watching. So maybe they could take that in and run with it and see if we can't get that out to you guys. And Sergism, uh, for custom open slot or free text, add one slot entry and specify it for a special intent with recognizable utterances. Use the slot type there, and the slots will be filled with free text entered within the intense utterances. Um, cool. All right. So 
Uh, this is our bot. It's basically working. It doesn't have any kind of validation or authorization or anything, but we could build that out later if we needed to. For now, I don't think we need to because this is kind of just like a simple hackathon project. Um, so at this point in time, I'd like to welcome Helen Zhang to the stream. Uh, she is a partner engineer at Slack uh, and an all-around badass. She is also a metalsmith. Uh, what else? She's going to walk us through how to build the Slack app, how to plug it into Lex. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do some stuff here on the back end uh, once she's got the Slack app created. And we'll try and get all of you guys in the uh, uh, in the um, and Foxy asks, am I participating in the AWS hackathon on dev post for the chatbot challenge? And no, I am not participating in that hackathon, uh, but we are running it. So I would strongly encourage you to participate in it. Uh, and Toga62 asks, is there a way to export a Lexbot? Um, and you can get kind of a description of it from the model building API. And Jay Becky asks, is there any way to restrict slot type to the specified values without using Lambda? And there is. Uh, you would have to create a custom slot type for that though. Okay, cool. Without further ado, I wanna bring in Helen. Um, Helen, can you unmute yourself and kind of I'm going to throw you on the screen here and throw myself off of the screen. Um, okay, sounds good. I'm here, if you all can hear me. Um, so as Daniel said, I'm Helen. I'm a partner engineer on Slack's platform team. So of course, Slack is a you know enterprise chat app. But in addition to just like the chat component, we also have a huge platform. And it, I, I think it's pretty well known for its chatbots. So I, I work with uh, some of our larger partners to help them build bots for our platform. So companies like Zapier, PayPal, and Giphy. Um, if you are a Slack user, you're probably already using the Giphy app. So uh, working with those companies to build apps for the platform. So I wanted to just uh, give a rundown of the Slack API, as well as like, telling you, as well as doing some of the app setup before passing it back to Randall. All right. So if you are thinking about building a Slack app, you would probably go to api.slack.com, and this would be where you get started. It's where all of our documentation lives, um, and I'll be walking through sort of this section um, for this beginning part. So I've talked about some of the apps that are available on Slack, things like Zapier or PayPal or Giphy, um, but like, what do those apps actually look like in Slack, especially if you're not a Slack user right now or if you haven't used a Slack app before? Well, um, some of the UI features include just sort of sending messages to users on your Slack team. So this is probably the most simple kind of application that you can build. Um, you can imagine if you're working at a company and you have a visitor come in, you could get a notification uh, that says, hey, your friend's here to see you, and then you just get up from your desk, you'd watch the front, and then you'd sort of greet that friend. Um, there's another type of Slack app that is out, essentially allows you to build workflows called interactive messages. So you can see here, um, this is an example of uh, buttons being used within a Slack message. So you can really get easily get feedback from users um, on what action they want to take. Uh, in addition to buttons, we also have the drop down menus and things like that as well. And then next is so the ever famous sort of bot user. Uh, and this is where you can sort of create that classic case of a conversational interaction between your app uh, and users. And that's what we've been building today. So since this is especially relevant, we'll definitely come back here in a little bit. Um, and next and sort of lastly are our sort of internal tools and how to kick off workflows. Um, so that would be the most common example of this would be a slash command. So you can imagine there's a help desk slash man that you can run to file a help desk ticket or just to kick off any sort of workflow. Um, and that includes things like Jiffy, which you kick off by just doing a slash Jiffy with um, some with like a search parameter, right? And you can like pick the correct GIF that you want to use. So 
those are kind of how Slack apps look and behave from a UI perspective. Uh, but there's a bunch of APIs that actually power these under the hood. Uh, the first one of those is sort of the events API, uh, which you can see here on the sidebar. And this is essentially how you can get um, streams of activity set to your app based on what user is already doing. So like a really common example of this, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom just so you can get an idea of the types of events that we have. Um, so these are events like obviously if a user is sending a message to your app, but the really beautiful thing about Slack APIs is that we actually use our um, these public facing API endpoints and these events to build our app uh, and to build all the Slack clients, which means that basically every single type of event you can think of can be returned from the events API, whether you're um, interested in like the, the fact that a team has added a custom emoji or that they created a file or that a user is online or offline. So these are the types of events that you can subscribe to. And later on today, we'll be subscribing to just the um, IM event. So you'll get a request on your events API endpoint that you can figure on your side whenever a user is sending an IM to your bot. Um, the next part of the Slack API that is pretty essential is just the web API. So this is really straightforward, and this is essentially how your app can send you know, API requests uh, to Slack. So again, um, there's a ton of different methods that are available. Um, things like posting a message to Slack, all the way to uh, you know, getting a list of the apps that are installed on the team. So taking a peek at not only what your apps are, but, uh, or not only whether your app is installed on a team, but also what other apps are installed on a team. So you could do a little bit of sleuthing. Okay. So, um, oh, and one last thing I want to show is the message builder. So obviously, um, you, your app will primarily interact with a Slack user using messages. So this is a really cool tool where you can just sort of enter your message and see a preview of what that would look like in Slack. And this will update real time. So as I you know, remove this text and type something else like, hi, this is Helen, um, this bottom preview will actually change. So you can then play with things like formatting um, and attachments as well. Just waiting for this to load. But yeah, you can play with sort of formatting and attachments as well. So you could get that message to look exactly like how you want it to look before you actually add it to the app. And this is an example of what buttons might look like. And then you can scroll down here to sort of change the value of the buttons. So if I change that line right there, uh, this will change from thermonuclear war to thermonuclear death. All right. Um, so having said all that, let's go in and actually create that app. So um, in order to create an app, you can just go to the api.slack.com homepage and you just click this big green start building button. Um, and it'll automatically prompt you to, um, to create an app. So you can set the name of the app and set it to a team that owns that app. This uh, AWS Twitch Slack team is the one that we'll be using today. So uh, you can use that. Uh, so we're just going to use that today. And for the app, App name, I'll just call this Boating Bot. Um, and create that app. So once the app is created, you'll be um, brought to this sort of app landing page where you can pick and choose the different types of functionality that you can add to your app, depending on what it's doing. So for today, since we're building a bot, uh, I'm definitely going to go in and add this bot user. Uh, so you click in, you click add a bot user. You'll, you can set a name. I'll just leave this as voting bot for now. Um, and I'll make sure the bot is always shown as online. Um, so I'll do that. I'll save the changes. And then I can also then go to this event subscriptions tab that we talked about before and enable uh, event subscriptions. So once that's enabled, uh, you can see here that it'll ask for a request URL. I'm going to hold off on populating this uh, after.
after the bot is created on the left side, uh, we can go ahead and populate all of these. But for now, we'll just subscribe to the event. And so we'll subscribe to the bot user event, like we talked about this before, um, like we talked about before. And that'll just tell you um, or give your endpoint a ping when it's when a message is posted to their IM channel. So I'll add, so, oh, sorry. I'll save those changes. Um, so I noticed that there's some audio issues. I know that Randall's probably doing some tinkering on the back end, but I'll also try to speak up. So in case it's me, this is all I can do on my end. All right. So we just added the bot user, and we also subscribed to the correct um, event subscriptions. And I'm also going to do uh, one more thing, which is to make sure that our OAuth scopes are correct. Um, so here is on this OAuth and permissions page is where you can scroll down and uh, select the correct kind of permissions that you want to use. So uh, you, you can see here that there's already sort of the bot user scope that's been added, but I'm also going to add in a, a one more that is just chat write bot, uh, which allows you to send sort of messages into the Slack team as a voting bot. And I'll also add in team read uh, and as I said here, this is where um, the scope will allow your app to essentially get more metadata and more information about the team that the app is installed on. So I'll save these changes for now. And then I'm actually gonna go up here and I'm going to install this app to the team. So um, I know that we're on the OAuth page and that's always pretty intimidating because no one wants to build an OAuth flow before they actually build the functionality of their app. So this is a change that we've recently made, but you can actually install an app onto a team without uh, onto the team that owns the app without actually doing any OAuth at all. And so this really allows you to build either an internal integration for your team or to just test that functionality before you're actually going through and building the clunky OAuth part of it. And that way you can really test and see that the functionality is what you want. So I'll just click this install app to team button. Um, it'll take us through sort of a Slack hosted OAuth flow, and I'll click install. And now that app is installed on a team, and we get the tokens that we'll need um, to start do, performing actions as a bot. And before I hand it over to Randall, I'm going to do one last thing, which is add him as a collaborator on this app. So you can only add collaborators that are on the same team as you, but because Randall and I are both on this team, I'm going to start typing his name. I should be able to find him, um, and he's already added. And so with that, he should be able to go in and actually get the client ID, client secret, um, verification token, all of that good stuff that he'll need to actually connect Lex with this Slack bot. So with that, I'll hand it over to him. So Helen, before you hand it over to me, would you mind uh, telling me what exactly I need to copy over? Uh, because being yeah. a total noob, uh, I don't know how this works. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put up my screen and I'll leave you kind of on the screen and uh, okay. you can kind of help me figure out what portion of this needs to go where. Okay, sounds great. Okay, so I know we have this, how's the audio everybody? It's hard to do two audios at once, sorry. Is that better now? Trying to uh, change this noise filter. All right, cool. Well, this is about as good as it's gonna get. Let's keep moving. Okay, so I know, Helen, that I've gotta go over into this channel section uh, and this is where I can set up, you know, various channels, whether it's Twilio or Facebook or, in this case, Slack. And I'll call this channel just, you know, the AWS Twitch chat channel. Um, oh, it must be between 20 and 50 alpha characters. So let me take out my spaces. Um, let's see here. The next thing that I know that I need to do is I need to go over to that Slack team and add in the various credentials. Um, yeah. So if I go to api.slack.com, 
that should get me in the right place, but I'm not sure I'm on the right team. Um, so you should be able to use a team selector in the top right. Um, and it'll say your apps. Or sorry, if you go into, if you're on api.slack.com and you click so your apps on the top right, you should be able to see a list of all the apps from all the different teams that you're signed in on. And then what is the name of our team again? Uh, our team is called AWS Twitch Slack. Slack. Um, and I think the, sorry, and I think it's just AWS Twitch um, Oh, it is. Oops. Yeah. Uh, and then I have no idea what this is, but let's. Sweet. Um, and then is this going to be the Twitch voting bot or the voting bot? I don't remember which one. I, is. I think it's just voting bot. All right. Does this look like the one that you were expecting? I have to wait for the lag a little bit, but yes, I think so. So. Okay. It's the voting. So now you're here. Okay, cool. So I've got this in front of me. I see my app credentials, and then I see some things over on my page. If I just close out some windows really fast, uh, that kind of correspond to uh, all of this. Yeah. Uh, and I know that I shouldn't really copy the client secret while we're on Twitch, so I'll, I'll move over into another uh, window to do that part. But uh, what, what are my next steps here? Yeah, so in order to sort of fully connect Slack as a channel, um, you'll need the client ID and the client secret. Um, the client ID and the client secret are basically just you know, the identifier for your app so that Slack knows that you're the app that's making these requests. And so those are pretty industry standard sort of OAuth parameters. But there's one more thing that is called the verification token. And that's something that is pretty unique to Slack. So the verification token is uh, used when you're getting requests from Slack, such as from the events API. Um, and this is a token that Slack knows and that you also know so that, um, so that when you know someone is sending a request to your publicly available endpoint, you know that that is actually coming from Slack and not, say, coming from some random malicious third party that is, send, that is spoofing a Slack request so that they can get some user data out of you. Gotcha. So uh, that's kind of like a CRC check for, for like being a networking nerd. It's like some sort of, you know, error correcting code that's both identity and uh, integrity of the message at the same time, right? Yes. That's yeah. pretty cool. So Slack channel. Um, and then I don't need a KMS key for this one, but I'm going to need this verify token. Uh, so I can grab this thing. And I can put this in. And Oh, this is Facebook again. Sorry. How did that happen? Sorry, one second. That's annoying that it changed. AWS Slack channel. And we'll say the production alias. Uh, my verification token goes here. And then I'm going to go off into another window to kind of do the rest. So I'll bring this back shortly. But um, I need the client ID. That I can do. And then I need the client secret. I can do that too. Um, and then do I need a success page URL or anything like that? Or can I just click activate? Yeah, you can leave that for now. That's something that you did need before we essentially hosted the first OAuth flow for you. But now that we do that, you don't really need it anymore. Great. So I just click activate and we can try it out. Uh, so once you click activate, I believe you'll get a, um, what is it called? It's not a callback URL. Or is it a callback URL? Anyways, you'll get the URL that you'll need to paste into the events API side. OK, cool. So I have this postback URL and an OAuth URL. So let me copy both of these. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Okay, cool. So, and then I go over here and, oops, you guys can see it now. I'm trying to cover it with my hands and that's not working. <laughs> oh well. So what's the next step then? Um, so in order to use the events API, uh, you'll, you can go to the events API, or so the event subscriptions page within the Slack API panel. It's right above gotcha. bot users on the feature side. Um, and there we'll need to paste in the sort of um, receiving URL. For that's the webhook URL? Essentially that, yeah, exactly. Cool. So that's where Slack will send events to AWS. And then do I need to do anything else or can I just go ahead and click save changes and we can start using it? Yeah, you should be able to, well, you should be able to uh, click save changes. I'm actually not sure that that is the correct URL type now that I think about it, but yeah. Should it be the webhook URL or the OAuth URL? It should be a separate type of URL, but yeah, check this out. Um, see if it, I think this is the, the more correct one. So we'll go ahead and enable events. We'll click save changes. Uh, and then I can go into Slack. Oh my God, this is a terrible thing to do to open on Twitch. The number of Slack channels. Yeah, I'm going to move this into another window just, just in case. Um, I don't actually have the Twitch one open in the app, so let me go to the web client and open it from there. Yeah, I think that'll be safer for you in terms of not showing the other teams too. So, so what's the else. what's the best way uh, to get to the web client? Um, if you just type in the, the team URL, which is AWS Twitch Slack .com, um, and you're in the same browser and profile, then you should already be able to sign in. And did you already install the app into the channel? Uh, yeah, I installed it into the team. Cool. So now I can go and I can message voting bot, right? And I can yeah. say, what are my options? And no response. What are my options? So maybe I need an IAM policy on the Lex side that has the permissions to go out to Slack. I wonder if that could be it. Um, I believe the issue might be that we're, uh, yeah, that you might not be receiving the events in the right sort of channel on the Lex side. Okay, let's see what's happening here. Uh, so it looks like we haven't received anything in the past little second here. So let's make sure everything's still working. What are my options? So, okay, I'm over here on the Slack API side, uh, and I've put in this request URL. Um, what, what, what are my next steps? Sorry, I don't know any better. Um, right. No, I think, I think that request, I, as long as we're sure that the, that request URL, um, well, it's verified. So definitely it understands a verification token. Um, so theoretically that should mean that that request that we're sending any, um, valid events to that endpoint. Uh, okay, so I think we're getting it on the Lex side. Okay. I mean, I mean, it, it looks like this is the valid endpoint. Uh, yeah, it looks so maybe we have an IAM policy issue. So Lex channel IAM policy. We might need to explicitly add the fact that uh, that we can send out to Slack. And then Toga62 says, set the request URL value to the postback URL 
that Amazon Lex provided in the preceding step. Subscribe to message.imbot event to enable direct messaging between the end user. And Deepak Pal is asking if he can control EC2 instances through Slack. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of people, there's this common thing called chat ops that's kind of, kind of popular. Um, so channels. Uh, and I just want to make sure that we have the right kind of role here. I want to make sure that it has permissions to access that Lex or that Slack channel. It's on the Slack side, you're saying. Drith, yeah, Drith. the redirect URL stuff, it sounds like they're saying that is necessary. Um, OK, we can try that. Cool. I'll do that then. Oh, you know what? Yeah, um, this makes sense. And the reason for this is, yes, uh, the insert the one click install that I showed you guys um, with it from that was launched within api.slack.com works and that gives you the correct uh, like to OAuth tokens to be able or access tokens to be able to do all this but uh, Lex doesn't know those tokens yet and so the only way that Lex can get those tokens is a if we paste those in somewhere in our code or b if uh, we actually do end up doing this redirect URL stuff um, and Let's essentially gets that programmatically by by calling auth that access, exchanging for code, etc. So I just did that, and we'll hop back over here, and I'll say, what are my options? Hmm. Slack needs my permission. No, it doesn't. Um. Hmm. So try. Was I on the right? So, um, so try what? So try actually initiating the ins installation from outside of Slack um, by essentially using what is called the Add to Slack button. So uh, if you go to API. Actually, I can I can drive that on my site as well. But um, up to you. So it's called the uh, Add to Slack button. Slack button, um, and you should be able to find it within Voting Bot. So um, under so under manage distribution for voting bot. Um, so try this button. So uh, so sorry. Go up to I think manage distribution under settings. Yep. Got that. And you should be uh, yeah. And you can just click on that and or use that either one and try doing this Slack off. Yeah, we got it. OK, cool. That's okay. the way to do it. Sweet. Cool. Uh, Toga62, we, we got it. We just didn't have the right OAuth flow going there. Um, way, way cool. OK, so now I can vote. And can we invite these guys to this channel? Is there any way to like have a bunch of people join the channel really fast? Uh, yeah, of course. So um, if you if y'all, what is the best way to do this? So um, the there's no like open invite for Slack channels, but if y'all provide email addresses, uh, we can definitely invite each of you individually. Or, or maybe we could code up a quick app that you could just put in your email, and then it would send you the Slack invite. Is yeah. There, is there Sounds a way to great. do that really fast? Um, there's not a way to do that fast, but there's, there's a way to do that in the way that you build a new app. Uh, um, OK, so I think um, Louis Artola Ask, can you recap what you did to fix this? 
Uh, and so just to recap, what we did is we, so the issue that we ran into is that Slack has a new sort of installation uh, method that essentially makes it easier for you to install the Slack app that you created onto the team quickly. But um, the way that we did that was essentially hosting an OAuth flow for you, which means that you didn't end up getting that um, the correct or end up getting any access token on the other end of that OAuth flow. So the way to fix that is essentially just um, kicking off the OAuth flow on your end um, and having the redirect URL populated and everything like that. So therefore, uh, you're actually getting the access token and saving it on your end. And then Suki Sava had a, an idea for an open invite GitHub page. Um, yes. So what am I going to need? Am I going to need those same OAuth credentials? Can I even use those same OAuth credentials? You should be able to, yeah. Um, unless there's any permissions issues, but. Um, I wish I'd planned this part out better. Sorry, this is my fault. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't even sure I'd get it work. We'd get it working. <laughs> um, um, yeah, a quick Google form sounds actually like the easiest. Yeah, let's do that then. Um, yeah. So forms.google.com. Thanks, Java One Guy. Uh, um, in the meantime, uh, I can start inviting people. How do I? No, not multiple choice. Uh, uh, okay, cool. So. Um, Y'all can also whisper your email addresses uh, to me. My uh, screen name is Helen Singh in the Twitch chat. So if you don't feel comfortable posting it in a public setting like this, you can send a whisper instead. OK, that Google form should work. And we'll invite people later. Uh, and you guys are welcome to use this channel to kind of like, there's another, there's another channel that's actually really uh, easy to get into, right? Which is the uh, Slack bot developer channel? Yeah, um, absolutely. So uh, there's one sort of community Slack team that is called Dev for Slack, the number four. So D-E-V, the number four, slack.slack.com. And um, you can go in there, meet other bot developers. Uh, some of us on the Slack team also hang out there. And you can ask questions, uh, sort of just hang out. Um, yeah, that's actually a community-owned uh, instance, so it's not even something that we manage. And so you actually get to meet, like, I think thousands of other bot developers developing for things like Slack, but also other chat tools. Way cool. Okay, and then I noticed that uh, somebody named uh, uh, Deepak Pal was asking how you could manage EC2 instances. We have something called SSM, Simple Systems Manager, which I think does a lot of the stuff that you're trying to do, whether they be Windows instances or Linux instances. So you can actually call out to SSM from Lambda. Uh, so you could do some of your instrumentation and stuff that way. Uh, and then Adam Krupa says, fast and off topic question, spell out programming. Is Java as programming language really thrash as many people say? If you will recommend me go for C Sharp or C. Thanks for answer. Um, I'd say go for Java, it's, you know, it's the coding language standard. C is great too. C sharp is great too. You can't go wrong. Just learn something and stick with it. Uh, and then Lu Sartola says, can you send messages to the bot by using a mention in any channel? Or do you have to explicitly type the message directly to the bot user? Um, 
I think that you can still get it to respond to messages in any channel, but you have to add the correct permissions and you still have to mention it, correct? Uh, yeah, that's correct. So uh, if you remember earlier, when we sort of added the types of events that we received, we only specified that we wanted to receive IM message events. And so therefore, the, even though the bot can be in the general channel, it's not going to hear anything that you're saying in the general channel. Uh, and that's just for like different privacy reasons, because Slack is being used on you know enterprise level teams. They don't necessarily want apps they installed to be able to listen to every single channel. Um, having that said, you can go in and add additional permissions like channel messages into there so that you actually do end up receiving those types of events. So I'm gonna see if I can get it to work in just a channel. Um, and then unfortunately we should kind of close out the stream and I should head to the airport and get on that plane to London. Um, and I'm sure Helen has uh, work to do as well. Where is bot users? Where's the very bottom? Oh, sorry, under event subscriptions, under features. So I can say at bot user event, which is channel message or messages channels? Uh, yes. Uh, I think it's message channels. Okay, then I can go to save changes. And then do I need to re-OAuth because I've added new permissions? Uh, yeah, you will. Um, and then uh, Drizzt51 says, the problem with channel messages is that Lex responds to everything. Is there a way to lock it down to just mentions? Uh, and I don't know, I haven't experimented with that. I'm sure you could do it on the Lambda side for sure. Yeah, uh, you can definitely do that on the Lambda side. So you you just basically have to, uh, so you'll get every single message within, uh, when you subscribe to channel that message, or actually if you subscribe to uh, sorry, message channel or message IM. So the thing to do is just um, get the bot's name um, and basically discard every single message that doesn't start with uh, your bot's name if it's from, coming from channels. So you could probably do that in an initialization hook so that you don't get charged for a, uh for the intent. Um, and then Programmo is asking what the... Uh... Yeah, um, it's def for Slack. So I'll just type that into the channel so everyone can do Oh, sorry. No, you're good. Totally um, misunderstood what he was asking. I mean, I, 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 I anyway. could have misunderstood it as well. Okay, I'm gonna click this add to Slack button again. Uh, invalid team for, oh, I'm in the wrong team now. So how do I go back to this team if I refresh this page? Then uh, um, I go back, then I close this out and I close this out and then I refresh this page and make this my active session. And then I click this button again. I, I should just copy this. Yeah, uh, I think actually, if you just change the dev for Slack um, thing in the URL to uh, AWS Twitch, you should be fine. And then Java One guy mentions that for another chatbot hackathon, I just used outgoing webhook to API Gateway Lambda uh, that could call Lex. And someone was mentioning earlier how you could integrate with Telegram and Line and all these other uh, kind of like mobile messenger apps. And I just wanted to say that's pretty much how I did most of those integrations. Uh, it was entirely through that, um, that kind of workflow. And you can still do that with Slack as well. But uh, I think that's somewhat deprecated, isn't it, Helen? Uh, sorry, pardon? Is the, uh, is the kind of the, the webhook from Slack, is that kind of deprecated or are you guys kind of promoting use of the events API now? Yeah, um, there's the events API is better for a lot of reasons, mostly that it can be integrated with a Slack app for just like various many boring legacy reasons. Uh, 
outgoing blog posts can't be integrated into an actual Slack app, so it can only be used like, as an internal integration, which doesn't prove to be very useful if you're trying to do anything large scale. But it's still available, so if, you, if that is the use case you're going for, you can definitely still use outgoing blogs. Uh, so voting bot is responding to every single message. Okay, we could probably fix that in one of these initialization hooks. Um, and I would love to do that here on the stream, but unfortunately, we are about out of time today, guys. Um, I think we can take maybe one or two more questions, but otherwise I'm gonna start closing everything out. Uh, so again, this has been Helen Zhang, who's a partner engineer at uh, Slack, and you can find her on Twitter at HZW, right? HWZ. HWZ, sorry. The fact that you got a three character Twitter domain, were you at Twitter when you got that? Uh, no, but I, I'll admit I pulled some strings. Okay, you gotta tell me how you did that because I've been trying to get this Twitter <laughs> handle for 10 plus years, literally 10 <laughs> plus years. Um, and I have a trademark on it and everything. So that's that's the crazy yeah. part. Whoa, that is crazy. Um, all right, well guys, Thanks a lot for joining, and I hope you learned some stuff. I hope you were able to build something kind of interesting for everybody. Uh, hopefully, we'll, Helen will, will, will join us again sometime in the future, and we can explore the Slack API a little bit more and maybe some other integrations with chat ops and AWS. Um, again, this is still kind of an experiment, our Twitch streams are. So any suggestions that you guys have uh, would be really, really useful. I will actually tally the votes from this, uh, this poll later and we'll see what we come up with. Uh, I hope you guys had a great time on the stream. Thanks again. Have a nice day. Bye.